Um, it's interesting because we had one that was uh, conservative parents and liberal teens. You know, a pretty s typical situation. But let's give it a watch. Let's see how this one goes. It's conservative teens versus liberal parents. I can't Middle wait. Ground. The two uh, most annoying people in the world. Okay, listen. Conservative parents, normal. I get it. They're also annoying. But we, we're used to it. Liberal teens, used to that as well. Liberal, like conservative teens, though, oh my God, they are the worst. They are the most annoying group of people in the whole world. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just being honest with you, brother. Okay. Although liberal teens are also annoying. Okay. And, and, and liberal parents, though, oh my goodness. Jesus, Martha, you're going to you smoke weed? I don't know. This joke's going nowhere. But, Let's get into this video. It is a social experiment that brings humans with opposing beliefs together. These okay. discussions may contain viewpoints that are the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and to be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. Please see the humanity in each participant. And as always, we encourage empathy. You're equating some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you uh, see my an life is unsupported... Why would you see um, my life is privileged, though? Because you're not ugly. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't say that about you. Why would you see my life as privileged? I'm, I'm privileged. Okay, that's fine. But why, why would you see my life as privileged? For one, you're a man. Whoa! He's actually a boy, a groomer. <laughs> Got her! He's a teen. Calling him a man. Jesus, what is wrong with you? Shame on you, girl. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Okay. The government has no right to tell people what to do with their body. Um, I mean, I don't think anybody believes that because you're not allowed to, you know, end yourself, if it, you know what I mean? So the, the government, very clearly, we agree that the government does have some right, most people, to, to tell you what to do with your body in some capacity. I'm assuming that this is more of like a conversation about abortion, but you know I'm right. Vaccines? That's... Yeah, I don't think the government has the right to tell you what you want I'm to do. Sorry. Okay. I you guys are confusing. Stood here because of vaccines, but I know a lot of you guys probably look at me like, oh, what about abortion? Oh, yeah, there you go, too. Yeah. I mean, like vaccines, I think the government has the right to tell you to use a vaccine. You know, I don't know what to tell you. You know, you might be like, oh, that's upset. Like, I get it. I understand the COVID. It was a scare vaccine, might have been a little, you know, it came out quick. I get it. People are a little uh, skeptical. The reality is, we live in a society full of people, and sometimes you have to do things that are good for society. You know, it just is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's what living in a society. If you don't want to do that, go live in a forest. You know, I mean, like, do your thing, man, brother. You can do your thing. Go hunt squirrels. You can do that. I wouldn't want to do that. But if we want to participate as part of this infrastructure, you know, got to do some things. Now that doesn't mean you shan't, you can't speak out against it. You know, because you always have to keep your government in check. But you know, now the thing is, when it comes to abortion, two bodies are involved. It's the woman and it's the fetus. The fetus, you know, has a heartbeat, has DNA. It should have rights. When? W Life begins at conception. That's not when the heart's there. Though. Heartbeat starts at four weeks. It's not just a clump of cells. It is life. At 21 weeks, it can live mm. outside of the womb. Abortion ends. With like significant technology. Like that's not what you're saying isn't. It's only true because. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to. I'm just going to say it. I am pro-choice. All right. I, under, I have sympathy to people who look at the fetus and go, oh, that's, that's a life that you're ending. Because you are. It's an objective truth. The reality, though, is as a society... We sit down and we have a conversation about like, okay, what we should have to have conversations about what is and isn't right. From a human perspective, people wouldn't consider a fetus like a human being, right? I don't either. Okay. I'm more of a first trimester kind of guy, you know, maybe second, but third, if there's like a really like a huge complication. Um, the reality is, is that if we birthed every single baby that was aborted, that's a million babies a year in the U S even if it was only like 50,000 a year, let's say it got cut down. Because if we made it illegal, less people would have them. That's still 50,000 more kids going into the foster care system, and the system's going to collapse. And you could be like, well, that's not right. I don't know what to tell you. Life is hard. It's not like there's one, like nothing's going to be perfect. So we'd have to cut welfare programs. Um, and then a lot of kids in foster care probably get abused even more than they already are now. And it would just be, it would be horrible. And with, if we had to cut these welfare programs, because that's what we need to do. I mean, think about it. A lot of people that, that do that opt into doing this, it's a lot of those people are poor and they either have to go on welfare um, or, well, they usually have to go on welfare. Almost all of them go on welfare. We would collapse as a society or we can cut welfare, which is going to cause us to go into a regression. Okay. Look, every single successful country has a robust welfare systems. You can sit here and be like, oh, our, I think our welfare is flawed. We can have conversations about that. 
But fundamentally, getting rid of our welfare systems is going to collapse their society. So there's no fun option. So the reality is, is that you give some people the ability to, for uh, to an extent, um, <clears throat> choose their own form of population control. I don't like it. I personally wouldn't get one. Well, I can't because I'm a guy. I wouldn't want to get one because I'm responsible. Okay, I'm a responsible guy. But we have to understand that different people have different things going on in their life. It's unfortunate. I know most pro-life or pro-choicers aren't going to uh, say that because they, they're going to be like, no, 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 that's mean. It's like, no, it's the reality. Okay. So. With murder and death, over 90% of abortions happen within the first 10 weeks. That's still, I think that's not acceptable. But they still have the potential of having life, though. The mortality rate of a fetus getting abortion. Sure. It was so, so does my cum. Forcefully impregnate all periods. F I A P. Fap, fap, fape, fiap. All of them have the potential. All of them have the potential. Aborted is 100%. It's going to die when it's aborted. And you're very but lucky. You'll you guys can't adopt. No, have to kill it. Okay, so I just want you to, I understand that you're very sensitive to what I just said. Adoption rates are abysmal, and there's a lot of abuse within the foster care system. You seem to have this idea that adoption is like a 100% like a guarantee. It's just not. I think there's something like 400,000 people are kids in the foster care system. And once you get past the age of like three, you're considered unwanted in the, as, from an adoption perspective. I know it sounds like a really easy solution, but it's not. Especially considering conservatives are very, like, very, very aggressive about making sure that gay people can't adopt. Uh, and on top of the fact that it costs tens of thousands of dollars to even adopt in the first place, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of problems. The first thing that you want that you'd have to do is you'd have to advocate for making it easier to adopt. Um, you, I know you want to play the easy way and you want to say just pro birth and then not care afterwards, but that's really what you're saying. Nobody, no conservative is actually advocating for uh, making it easier to have a baby, and, and, and neither are progressives. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you want to, if you want to uh, be like very pro adoption, you have to create the circumstance that makes adoption easy. And again, gay people who adopted at much like much higher rates than other people proportionately to their size are usually turned away by conservative organizations that tend to have religious centers on them. So, I mean, again, like a lot of you guys have this very, I think the problem is a lot of you guys in general, regardless of what side that you lay on, you have this idea of the world that's very good. That's like very nice. That's very positive. The world is horrible. And you guys are coping constantly. And the world is much more aggressive and harsh than you think. And that's just the reality, man. And we have to make the correct choices. And the correct choice is to be pro, pro choice, man. And like, honestly, I personally, you could be personally pro life. That's what I am. But societally, no, nah, man. Just telling you, man, the system is set up against this. Sorry. You're going crazy in the chat, man. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're obviously very sensitive and not listening to what I'm saying, but you know, <laughs> if you want to, you could chat after the segment. You come into the Discord or something. we will never have to experience what it's like to have to make that choice. Mm. But what if I, what if I, what if I become a father and you know the woman who I got pregnant wants to have an abortion? It's going to affect me. You would have a discussion sure. with your partner then uh, and decide what you're going to do uh, and be glad that you have a choice of that, course, to but, even discuss with that partner. Unfortunately, human nature. What did I miss? You know the woman who I got. That's what it's like to have to make that choice. Mm. But what if I, what if I, what if I become a father and you know the woman who I got pregnant wants to have an abortion? It's going to affect me. You would have it. for sure. Yeah, that's one of those things where I think ultimately women get the choice, but men should be able to have like a conversation. It's unlikely that you would get a woman pregnant and have her have an abortion. He seems like the kind of guy who would like get a woman pregnant and like be there for the kids. So good. A discussion you know. with your partner then uh, and decide what you're going to do uh, and be glad that you have a choice of to, course, to but, even discuss with that partner. Unfortunately, human nature, if you take away the option or the right to do that, then they'll find it another way. And it will be unsafe. And, uh, but it's cheaper. Hangers are much cheaper. Uh, so would you support the mom? Would you support the mom in that scenario? If the mom had an abortion or the no, mom no, went? No, no, no. If she gave birth. Oh, of course. I would support her. I'd say what you do is a good thing. And no, 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 no. Support her financially for the rest of her life or for the rest of the baby's life. Are you talking about like, what, what do you mean me support her? Like as if a somebody, citizen or? If somebody a, has a baby. There, we do have child support and it comes from taxpayer money. There's foster care. There's. I'm, I'm unsure of the question that was being asked. Is he talking about if he was the father or what the fuck's happening here? It's adoption. There's mothers waiting. Those systems are very broken and people all the time are trying to stop funding for programs like that. 
Now, I want to ask you guys, do you, do you support vaccine mandates? Yes. So, so I mean, you, you stepped forward and said the government shouldn't tell you what to do with your body, though. Why, why would you support? My issue is, is that he's got a good point on that. I mean, I, I mean, like, listen, I'm uncomfortable with some that we, we what well, the thing is, is that we're all comfortable with the fundamentals of vaccine mandates. We've all gotten like 10 vaccines to go to school. It's the new ones like COVID. That's a little scary because it came out so quickly that people are a little bit apprehensive about. I get it. But like, yeah, oh, overall, I still support it, even if I personally wouldn't want to get it. I mean, I got it. Um, and, you know, now. Look at me, I'm fat. It made me fat. It's crazy. I've been fat the whole time, but. No, but I understand the skepticism. But at the end of the day, we live in a society, man. I believe that the government should not be able to tell me what to do with my body, but I have to accept the consequences for the choices that I make with my body. The vaccines, for instance. I absolutely felt that everyone should get vaccinated. Why? Because this was a pandemic. But well, then you're saying that you think the government should have the right to tell people what to do with their body. If you don't want to, I don't think the government should have to tell you that you have to. But you then have to suffer the consequences of your choices, I'm which means you cannot to. patronize certain places. You can't put other people at risk. I know, I know you're saying they're doing it to protect us, but the coronavirus has, a, I think, a survival rate almost 98%, 99%. And well, I, I don't remember the exact sur the per percentage of survival. That's within the context that we shut down and we forced ma vaccinations. It would be much worse if we didn't do these things. And so it's an interesting thing for people to be like, yeah, but look, it's a, it's a high, the survival rate is so high. It's like, yeah, because we're taking so... The survival rate is where it is because of the precautions we were taking. That's just a, that's just a fact. It would be much different if we didn't put these protocols in place and we're mandating these vaccines why are we not mandating the flu what's frightening to me is that you're a <laughs> you're just a troll bro he just says lies how is it a lie <laughs> waiting some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you assume uh, my life is unsupported because you you're wearing a polo shirt um, see my life is privileged though you don't know my life would, i mean i don't say that about you why would you see my life is privileged? I'm, I'm privileged okay that's I hate this whole privilege conversation. Like, what do you? What does the privilege have to do with Fine, anything? Why, why would you see my life as privileged? For one, you're a man. But like, why bring up life. the flu? What's frightening to me is that you're equating some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you uh, see my life as privileged? Okay, I see what she's saying now. You have like a very easy life comparatively to other people. Stop bitching about it. I just the word privilege is so annoying. But okay, I guess. But Sweden took no precaution. Oh, okay. Do you see um, my life as privileged, though? You don't know my life. Would, I, I mean, okay. I don't say that about you. Why would you see my life as privileged? I'm, I'm privileged. Okay, that's fine. But why, why would you see my life as privileged? For one, you're a man. You know, most people commit suicide are men. Most people who work. In I know. How funny. I'm just kidding. In dangerous workplaces are men. Most people who fight in war are men. And yeah, man. And it's, listen, here's the thing. There's struggles back and forth with men and women. I tend to believe that men come out on the top with, like a, with a generally a higher power dynamic for the most part. Easier to get the job that you want. Uh, this this is changing every day. Like women are becoming more equal every day. You know, I think men and women both have their 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 issues. Uh, there's pros and cons. You know, and men, I think I personally believe men tend to come out on top a little bit more, especially when you take bodies and things. Bro, these women have to carry a baby in them, and then it comes out and ruins their vaginas forever. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, that's a privilege. All right. Who set that system up? I hate that argument. Who set the system up? Men. There's a, there's plenty of ways to say men are shit without saying who set the system up. If you're you're acting like uh, it's like oh most men go to or more men go to war. You're like who set that system up? You think women were like I? There's I doubt in the past that there was a significant amount of the female population going I want to go die. You know what I'm saying? Like some women do want to do that, but you know what I mean? Like the system to some degree kind of got set up by biology, and I certainly didn't set the system up. I'm just living in it. Okay, he didn't. But you're saying that I have to represent all men as well. It's a little insane. Same thing that that'd be like if I said that you're Amber Heard, right? That's a little sussy because she's a woman and you're a woman, right? A little too generalized. Uh, but hey, do you? I'm going to ask the disagreeers to step forward. Well, I think I give a unique perspective on this because I actually do agree with the vaccine mandate. My Is he trans? I think COVID was just a huge disaster. And I think it could have ended a lot sooner if things were more organized. What does that mean? Definitely. As far as whether the government should intervene on people's bodies, I think there are a lot of instances where the government should. One, to protect the society in general, especially in cases such as a pandemic where um, the disease could literally wipe out cities. In other True. instances as well, such as drug use, I think the government should intervene because when you have a society yeah. that's addicted to opioids or crack, it spreads like wildfire. And I've seen it firsthand. It's very difficult to control without the help of government. Now, on the topic of abortion. He's right. That one's, you know, very complex. And in general, I always want to favor a woman's right to choose. But I think there's also a very fundamental question that both of you brought up is um, at what point is a fetus a human or a person? Let's say a, a child is eight months in the womb. And at that point, the baby has a heart. 
The baby has a brain, has legs, has arms. Do you think it's okay for that to be terminated? Only if it's ugly. Nobody opinion. is doing that and nobody is having a board. Why are you freaking out? This guy's being very reasonable. It's a good question to ask. Like, at what point does a baby become a person? Like, I get it. You know, eight months, probably. I think for the most part, that, see, that's a conversation we have as like a social construct. When do we consider a baby a person, right? Um, I don't know, man. I, for me, I'm leaning more on like 12 weeks, you know? Unless there's like a significant 11 years old. <laughs> I think that we should wait until they're like three. Figure out if we actually want them. I'm sitting around like first trimester around 12 weeks, 15 weeks. Yeah, that's fine. Something like that. There, so nobody has abortions that late. So I think that they're very rare, but they do happen. They do happen that sometimes that late if there's like a significant complication, which I'm okay with. If it's going to kill the mother or the child, I think it's okay. I think it's horrible to think about, but like I get it. Abortions with viable fetuses, unless it is a medical emergency that will kill the baby and the mother. My name is Ben. I'm a business consultant for a telecom company, and I'm a liberal dad. When it comes to the abortion issue, I I'm not exactly sure where I stand. I am not pro-choice or pro-life. My name is Dawn. I'm a regional sales manager for a dialysis company as well as a therapist, and I'm a liberal parent. As far as my views on abortion, to be honest, it just makes me very sad. Uh, I can't believe that we are moving backwards by taking people's rights away to choose what's happening to their body. Not being an LGBTQ plus ally makes someone a bad person. Listen, this is a conversation to have. The first thing I would say is there's probably a diff. See, this is one of those things that people could interpret as like a dog whistle. If you're saying that not, there's a difference between being like an LGBTQ ally versus somebody who's like okay with gay people. You know what I mean? I think that some people would interpret this question as like, is it okay? Are you a bad person if you like gay people or not? Versus are you a bad person if you just don't support the movement, right? Like general three categories are like, dislike, and then like you don't care, like ambivalence. You just don't really give a shit. I don't think you're a bad person if you don't care about like advocation for LGBTQ rights. I, I mean like, you know, personally, I think that we should advocate for rights of marginalized communities. But if you're someone who's like, I don't give a shit, like, you know, that's better than that's better than nothing. There's also the category of are you a bad person for not liking gay people? I don't necessarily think that you're bad for not like just like if you're not <laughs> I don't think that you're a bad person for not liking a person you become a bad person in my opinion when you advocate against um when you're when you advocate against rights for people right I think that you could be a better person if you're somebody who doesn't like gay people and I would I would talk about it um to change your mind but I don't think that it necessarily makes you a bad person, right? Does that make sense? Um, so let's see what we got to say. <laughs> it's strong. It's, isn't a, it? right, it's, a, it's a general strong. way to put it. I would question someone's empathy. That's it. And their right. awareness of the other people around them, because I guarantee you, you know someone that's Absolutely. LGBTQ. Absolutely. And their environment. Right. Discussing the validity of the ex Look at these privileged white people talking about this topic distance of other human beings <laughs> isn't a political issue that's like it's, it's there that, there's something like wrong with yeah. you yes. if you like no trans people don't exist obviously they do i would like to think that it's a safer world <laughs> yes. to be lgbtq but that yes. would be naive of course people are getting murdered for being trans yeah you yes. know yes. And, yes. and and gay it's scary i have three kids i have three boys that is scary oh you know it's interesting her youngest son has the highest chance of being gay. It's true. If you look at trends, a mother that consistently has boys, every successive boy has a higher chance of being gay. It's true. One of them is trans. I worry. Well, it's probably the youngest one. I'm not, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I guarantee it. There's something, there's something in the womb, I think. This is a theory that has an impact making kids, like I think, like gayer. Or more feminine, I guess, in some capacity, the more boys that you have. And I think it's some kind of a biological, I think, this is what I'm saying, I'm like literally think, because the, the trend that I, that's then noticed that the kids have a higher chance of being gay is an absolute fact. But I, I personally, my, I theorize that it has something to do with the body's responses, I guess, to say like, oh, we have too many boys, so we need to produce some, like, a, more of a caretaker role. I don't know. I think it's into like a fucking warped theory that I'd have to have a conversation with somebody about. Uh, I can't, I'm not saying it. What? I'm not just saying these things. I'm telling you, this is a fact. It's a fact, bro. 
It's specifically the fact is that with more, the more boys you have, the higher chance they have to be gay. I'm being serious. Okay? We have twin boys. They, I don't know. Maybe they're both gay. That, I mean, for however progressive uh, a new generation seems, that, um, you know, I have to think about, will there be violence done? Which, I mean, every parent worries about violence. That's part of the gig of being a parent. Yes. Um, and I've got an extra, I've got a, I've got a new layer. <laughs> my child is in a one Firstborn girl in my family is gay and married last boy is, is gay. So sussy. You know, very sussy, very good. Wonderfully privileged situation where they have a lot of support. <laughs> what are you talking? Yes, can tell you, you like to have grooming gay children. What is it? Dude, you're a fucking, you got to tone it down in the chat, man. I'm going to have the band. You're going a little too crazy with this, like fucking, this, this, this conservative woke conspiracy theory bullshit. Okay. Okay. That Holy but shit. As they get older, as their get, circle, gets circle gets wider. Gets wider and you know. my sphere of influence gets uh, yep. less effective. Make sure you tell your trans child. I don't know if it's a, if they, they, I think it's a trans. I don't know what they said. I guess it's a trans boy. To tell people they're trans, okay? Because that unfortunately, some of the highest violence comes after somebody sleeps with somebody and they don't tell them. Although that's usually trans women and men that it happens with. Um, it's an unfortunate reality, brothers. You got to find a safe space. Uh, yeah. I, get old. I, choose, I personally say use t Tinder, you know? You know? Yeah. Hi, I'm Cindy. I am a stay-at-home mom and I am a liberal parent. How are you a liberal stay-at-home mom? Blech. Oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom while my husband works. Get out of here. You can't do that. That's cheating. That's che that's cheating. What are you talking about? <laughs> One of my children came out as trans two years ago. Mine and How my husband's it? response was, that's great. Would you like to go by these pronouns? And I don't know. My response would be like, fuck. Listen, I'm not trying to be rude. First of all, how old is the kid? Right? If my kid's four and they're saying that, I'm going to say, mm, okay. Probably not. And we'll just pretend like it didn't happen. Because like, what the kid might just be saying dumb shit. If they get older and they continue the, 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 the thing, I'd be like, okay. And we'd start to, we'd, we'd start to figure it out more. My kid was like 18. Like, I'm trans. I'd be like, all right, you know what? I get it. You know, I respect you and I love you. Okay. But we really got to figure out how old is this kid. I feel like it's very relevant. They only have the Instagrams of the, of the, conservative people so we're not gonna be able to figure out um how do i how do i how do i minimize this it's gonna give me agita if i can't minimize this All right, let's just continue would you like to pick out a name let's uh how make sure that kid? we talk to a gender specialist so we know what options there are and we'll just take this one step at a time we'll this kid sounds very young we'll move forward with the best information possible I guess that's fair. Disagree, step forward. But I wonder how old the kid is. I can provide a unique perspective on this because I'm actually bisexual. Stop telling people that you can provide unique perspectives on everything, okay? You're not that unique, okay? And being bisexual is not unique, okay? Bisexual is the new straight, all right, guys? You know it's true. Don't yell at me. I didn't create the rules, all right? Um, so I think... Uh, not being an ally, as long as you're not harming people, you're not harassing people, you're not posting on social media that these people suck, then yeah. I don't think you're a bad person. For I mean, I agree with that. I don't think that's unique, though. Yeah. Um, as a Christian, I don't think that being LGBTQ aligns with God's um, view of the family. It doesn't mean that I will disrespect them in any way. I just think that it's a sin as far as your faith is concerned. <laughs> I just, I, like, it's just so weird. Because they're like, yeah, you know, I personally don't. I think that your whole entire lifestyle and choice is a sin, but I won't get in your way. It's like, oh, my God. Like, come on. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, you don't like gay people. Just say that. Because your God told you to. And that's fine. I disagree with you. I think it's kind of cringe, but okay. Concerned. What would happen if your child came out to you that they were gay, bisexual, trans? I think that if... Just throw it up. I'm just kidding. The sin is not practiced upon. Um, it's not a problem. It can be dealt with. If especially so, dude, the, the, as long as... This is like the horrible thing. As long as you don't practice the sin as long as you so that what they're saying is like you if you're being gay isn't something you could just turn on and off if you're gay what they're saying is that if, if as long as for the rest of your life you don't enjoy your existence then it's okay that's horrible that's horrible how do you how do you support that you know what i mean that's horrible it's terrible really with transitioning it usually comes from mental problems like depression anxiety all those things. So you think they can um, be kind of taught to not be gay? Uh, no, I Pray think the gay way. You support conversion therapy? 
No. All right, let her speak. No, I don't think that we can convert anyone into doing anything. I would not ostracize my child, but I would not support it. Just like I don't support any sin. So I, I, I think that if you want... I mean, then stop talking, bitch. Because <laughs> the Bible says women need to shut the fuck up. I'm just kidding. I mean, I don't know if it says that. Okay. You want to be transgender, you could be transgender. We live in, a, again, like I said, a free nation. But if you're asking for my opinion, I believe that men and women are completely different. We have different chromosomes, different bone structure. If you're, if you're a transgender woman, I still view you as a man. You could, you could. Well, those people would just argue, like, I would argue that, like, gender and sex are a different thing. And that, that's a whole conversation I have as well. I mean, but men and women generally are different, for sure. Biologically. Uh, like, a trans woman isn't a biological man, a woman. It's a gender woman. Um, you know, express yourself as a woman, that's fine. But I don't believe that society should automatically, you know, say that, okay, you're a woman. Let's say, for instance, there's a... I don't either. I think that you have to make a reasonable attempt to express yourself as a woman to be considered a woman. But I think it's fair, you know, and, mo and all trans women do that. And if you're a trans woman who doesn't make any attempt, then I don't think that you're a trans means anything to you. Right? Same. 18 year old biological man, but says that they are a woman now. They still have male genitalia. They could walk into a woman's locker room and show off their male genitalia. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's okay. That's that's like completely. <laughs> you know what's so unfortunate? This is something that'll happen probably in like high school and middle school, right? Like boys saying, "I'm a girl," <laughs> and then walking into the the bathroom with girls. That's something that they're going to do because you know boys are stupid fucks. Um, but for the most part, like just saying, "Oh, I'm a girl now. I'm gonna walk into the girls' bathroom." It's something that doesn't happen. Okay. It's just something that just doesn't happen. Like, I mean, I mean, it could happen, but it's very low likeliness. But, dude, pedophiles. Oh, my God. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to I wanna talk about this because I know you're a very conservative individual in here and you're having a meltdown and you're just saying everything. If you look at the rates of pedophilia, most pedophilia, like, I, I believe most of the targets of pedophilia are boys. So why aren't you concerned with men going into male and into boy, uh, like male restrooms? Why don't you care about that? See, this is the problem. It's like you're you're pearl clutching over this situation. Like, oh, pedophiles might go in the girls' bathroom. Okay, well, pedophiles might also go into the boys' bathroom, right? So, like, I just feel like you don't really give a shit. You're just kind of you're you're melting down over everything that you feel offended by, rather than like thinking a little bit more critically about it. Like, maybe let's consider like a third option of some kind of a gender neutral bathroom, right? Something along those lines. That's not happening. It is happening, though. Is, is it really happening? That is literally transphobia. It's, 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 it's rare, and, though, and, but and not even a trans. It could just be a creepy guy, like, pretending yeah. to be. Yes, the, creepy guys are, I'm in much more danger in a women's restroom from yeah. a cis, gender, straight, creepy guy I know, but than that, I am a trans person. The excuse, you know what I mean? Well, I think that this young boy is saying, what if a creepy guy weaponizes transness to go assault somebody in the bathroom? Which is a, it's a reasonable argument. Fourth option, no bathrooms. True. No more bathrooms. Shit your pants, honestly. That's what I'm trying to say. So, so do you support uh, gender-neutral bathrooms? Like women yes. and men can go into the same bathroom? Do you think that could increase the chances of, of rape or assault? They, they probably not. I mean, it depends on where. Honestly, I don't think it would be a huge... It probably wouldn't be that big of a deal if we had like a gender-neutral bathrooms. Um, it really depends on the area that this is happening. Like if I go to my... I mean, like I, maybe I don't go enough places. If I go to like my local movie theater, I don't really think it's going to be an issue. I don't think, it's gonna, it's gonna, I don't think there's going to be a problem there. Maybe the issue happens in like a nightclub, um, you know, something like that. Personally, though, I know the conservatives still in here. I know that you're having a little bit of meltdown. If we're very worried about children getting assaulted in different places, what we should do is we should ban church because there is a massive network of children being raped by priests and then other priests covering it up. So I think maybe if we're worried about children, we should ban churches right that makes the most sense to me i mean like you're talking about how the lgbtq community is grooming children but what about religious institutions where hundreds of thousands of kids have been raped and molested and there's been zero accountability for the church I mean, it's very, it's very, it's very uh, suspicious to me that you put there's these people that tend to be men that are in very high positions of power in the churches, in an atmosphere where it's a hundred percent socially okay to not speak to anybody but your priest, where God is absolute and the priest is speaking through God, or the God is speaking through that priest, and then you have young impressionable kids that are told that they can't tell anybody about anything and that they can only confess to that priest. 
I mean, you'll take church over child molesters every day. I mean, sometimes what's the difference? I don't really know what to tell you. You're saying that the entire LGBTQ community is full of child molesters, but it seems like there's a lot of those in the churches. I, I, I mean, like my, my whole thing is, is like, it just feels very, uh, it seems like you don't really care about children getting raped or molested. You're more interested in using that to try to disavow the LGBTQ community. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you because I know that church can be very positive, but you put people. No, you guys don't put them in jail. You move them to other churches so that they can do, they can do shit again. Like it's just what ha this is what's been happening, <laughs> you know. And then people wonder why people are turning away from the church. It's because of massive, like, because of all the shit that's happening that gets covered up. I'm a troll. All right, man. I'm sorry you're sensitive, but it's the truth, man. Um, you know, it feels like if you really cared about kids that you would have these conversations without, like, having a meltdown. You know? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. But you're more, you're just calling all gay people child molesters you know um just letting you know man they already exist it's interesting it's that men are only concerned about this rape in the bathroom when we're having a conversation about trans folk but but gender neutral bathrooms just stem from this idea though no this idea that rape is going to suddenly go on the rise because of gender neutral bathrooms stems from transphobia also you could just do one stall gender neutral, neutral bathrooms you know I'm Eden, I'm 16 years old, and I'm on the conservative teen side. Um, uh. I think that transitioning does more harm than good, and um, I think that we are born in the body that we're given, and we should stay that way. God we are born in the body we're given, that's true. God has created us in his image, and I don't think we should change the way we are. Owning a gun is a big... I mean, like, how far does that go? Do we ban, like, any type of, like, boob surgery or anything, you know? Like, well, how far do we go with that with that ideology? Owning a gun is a basic human right. I don't know about that, bro, but I think that we sh people should have the right to own a gun, but uh, we should have like much deeper restrictions. I, I think that like owning a gun, there should be like gun license that's comparable to a driver's license. I think you should have to be like probably 21 years old to get a gun. I think there should be a lot more. You should have to like interview police uh, if you want to get a gun, et cetera, et cetera. I think it should be much more difficult than like just walking in and be like, yeah, I want a gun. And they're like, all right, here you go. That's how it worked in Texas. There was a background check, but you know, the kid was 18, walked in, didn't even have the money for the gun. He got it financed. Boom, walked right out. It's insane. It's in fucking insane. Basic human right. Um, I hate, I absolutely hate hearing about school shootings on the news and just shootings in general. Um, it's horrible. Do you have a unique perspective on this, Chase? You know, this isn't like, you know, Spider-Man's not going to save people. People have the right oh, to protect themselves. A lot of mass shooters target gun-free zones because they know there's not going to be a person who's going to uh, fight against them or shoot them back. There's a lot of um, mass shootings in, at schools, and that's because schools have gun-free zones. I've well, a school, what? I don't know how to respond to this argument. Okay. I, like, because uh, what are you? I, I, okay. Okay. Maybe you're trying to say that. We, I'm going to be very charitable and say that maybe you're trying to say that we should have security guards with guns in schools. Maybe. That might be true. But Jesus Christ. Just the way that that was said was, I don't know. It's just like, I mean, I can interpret that as poorly as possible. What do you want? The fucking teachers have guns? And that might be a bit much for the job qualification. Also, getting into it, um, usually, generally speaking, a lot of conservatives like to um, to reference this. Generally speaking, the reason that there's more gun violence in areas with more gun control laws is because the gun control laws are reactionary to gun violence that was there in the first place. But we don't really look at it like that. So areas that are more uh, densely packed tend to have like more gun violence in them than what whatnot. So what ends up happening is like in cities, you're like, okay, we have a lot of people. There's more irritation. There's more aggression. Um, there's less community. I like more less com community. And we're seeing higher rates of gun crime. So we have to respond to that by restricting gun crime. People think somehow that the implementation of gun restriction is making more shootings happen, which doesn't make any sense. It's again, it's usually places that already have incredibly high gun violence where you're implementing um, gun control into. And that's why the statistics look like that. So it does work. I think that we need to implement some form of gun control. I just don't think that outright gun ban, me personally, I don't think that that's what you should do. Okay. So. I view owning a gun as a right to defend myself. You look 
cut countries that have banned guns in the it's the same thing where um where like there was higher COVID restrictions in areas that had higher amounts of COVID, which tend to be densely populated areas. And people were like, see, the restrictions are making it worse. No, you're an idiot. The restrictions are there because it already is worse, because there are multiple different factors that contribute to, um, like, in the coronavirus case, like the spread of the, of the coronavirus, how densely packed people are is one of those big things, right? So these tend to be reactionary to an issue that's already existing, okay? In the past, the USSR, Nazi Germany, you look at China under Mao Zedong, they stripped their citizens of arms so they could oppress them. What? They didn't have any arms? How'd they work? And I think the reason why our founding fathers enshrined the Second Amendment is because they wanted us to protect ourselves against tyrannical government and to protect ourselves against Maybe. danger around us too. Maybe, but that doesn't mean that we need ever access to every single arm that the, the government has. We don't like we don't have nukes or tanks or grenades. We shouldn't. Okay, so like, there's could be a limit in some capacity. I think that as a from a woman's perspective, if as a woman you get into a dangerous situation, for example, with a man, having a gun and knowing how to use a gun is the only way that will protect me. Having my tiny little pepper spray won't help me forever. I think definitely if you uh, take away guns, huh? the bad guys will always get their guns of one course. way or another. I like I, I. So, okay, this is a conversation to have. The bad guys will always get guns. There are some bad people who even with gun restrictions will still get access to firearms. It's a hundred percent true. The reality, though, is that if we did implement like a complete gun ban in America, it would work. We would significantly reduce gun cr uh, crimes. It it would ju it it's just the truth, right? Um, uh, the the overwhelming majority of people who get a gun illegally get it through a legal infrastructure in the same way where illegal prostitution happens through like legal prostitution infrastructure. <laughs> Right. So if you banned like the movement of like a lot of people just get black market guns that come through regular means and then they just like saw off the serial number and then they sell it out. It's not so re re completely removing that infrastructure would remove uh, most people's uh, ability to get guns illegally. Would it still happen? Of course, of course. But you would drastically reduce it. I'm not for a full gun ban. I'm just telling you that it would work. OK, I'm just letting you know. I live in Los Angeles and LA has strict gun control laws. This is my perspective of it. I think LA has become a more dangerous city and I feel very unsafe walking down the street, just not armed. Crime is on the rise in America and I think one of the ways to stop crime is by owning a gun. But I definitely think that there should be this. It's also a way to increase crime <laughs> is owning a gun. Control in place to who buys guns. You couldn't just be able to go to a store and buy a gun. There should be regulations into who buys guns and True. who um, shoots a gun. I actually debated whether or not I was going to sit down because I do believe people have the right to bear arms. I do. My issue is what kind of arms they're bearing. I believe people should get to go hunt. But do you need a semi-automatic rifle to do that? I, I, I'm, I'll tell you what, personally, I'm afraid of guns personally myself, but I, um, I just think there need to be stricter regulations with it. But um, the majority of people who die by gunshot are women in a domestic violence situation. So mass shootings definitely don't want automatic rifles against that. Nobody needs them. But the most dangerous gun is the one in your home. I do want to ask you a question. Do you think it's a good point. You know, it's really unfortunate, though, too, because I think that we have to when it comes to uh, shootings in the home where uh, the, like a domestic abuse situation, I would seriously encourage you guys to look into domestic abuse and the way that it happens and the way that police officers fail to de-arm uh, domestically abusive men, people in general, but domestically abusive men, because it does happen. Um, they don't really there's like so many cases where police just won't listen to the protocol and it's fucking it's just terrible um i mean i think that i remember watching a video and i know a lot of people don't like to talk about it but like it was it was john stewart talking about domestic abuse and violence um and like i'll i'll i think maybe i'll 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 uh, link it in the I'll, I'll link it in the uh in the video when I post it on, put it on YouTube, if you guys want to give it a watch here, I'll throw that in there in the chat too. I think that women should have the right to bear arms to protect themselves yes. against. Yeah, I never. I, I, I'm not against the right to own guns. the The prompt was, "Do you think owning a gun is a human right?" But do you think? And I don't way? agree with that. In my perspective, I grew up in, in a gun riddled neighborhood. I myself am a gun owner now because of the fact that I had to create some type of means of self defense. So why did you disagree? I disagree because I would prefer not to be i think it's not a human right as much as almost a necessity for a lot of people i like this guy that makes that makes a lot of sense okay and, and not everyone there's a lot of neighborhoods that are very safe but even in a safe neighborhood you can be robbed you can be killed i've been stuck up several times with a gun to my face you know and all i can think of is man if, if 
I die, it's gonna be because I didn't have a weapon to help protect me. Do you think that we should take away all guns from the entire world? Yes, if there was like a magnet, like Magneto from X-Men, and he just suck up all the guns, I think that would be such a better place. All right, that's fair. I mean, it's not going to happen, but that's fair. My political opinions have my hurt my political opinions have hurt my relationships with friends and family. I have no idea. Um, I don't think I don't think it's hurt my. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, maybe people have seen my stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> but like, let's be honest. The only people who it hurts their relationships are annoying people that complain about politics all day in a way where they can't have conversations with other people in like a reasonable way. The worst are people who go to parties to talk about politics. Like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, shut up. That's that's annoying. Like, just shut up. You don't have to always talk about your fucking political ideology, Grandpa. You know what I mean? During 2020, when, you know, America got really, like, politically intense, and my teacher, she uh, was very politically active, and she wanted us to, you know, speak our voices, and they found out I was conservative, and they said, okay, you're completely going against what we believe. Like, the whole school is very liberal, and they, I guess, they just kind of pushed me away. Did you feel like you would get bullied? No, After. I'll just get looks. Some people come up and say, you're a racist or you're xenophobic. You know, they would tell me, oh, do you support Trump? But I just brushed it off. I told them, hey, I respect that you think like this. Please respect me. I think that that is, um, whether or not we have the same ideas, I think that that is still an admirable quality. Yeah. Despite getting looks or feeling like maybe you don't belong, that you're still, um, you have your convictions. Yeah. So I, I can respect that you're convicted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think. Well, there's no real way to change somebody's idea unless you have a conversation with them. I don't think that shaming somebody out of their political beliefs really works in any significant way. So if you really want to change somebody's perspective, you can sit down and have a conversation with them. Being liberal, we think of the right as being stuck in the sand. It's interesting to hear that liberals were not having his right opinion. I think that everyone should have their opinion. Well, I think we're talking about issues that aren't a matter of opinion, but mm. a matter of your morality, the value of human lives. I've had to personally block a few people on Facebook, family members, oh, wow. mostly wow. men yeah. that are married to the women in my family. I'm like, hey, this conversation conversation is really getting personal and hurtful and if you carry on this way could you imagine debating on facebook all day holy fuck i'm gonna have to block you were they harassing you holy uh, shit. I, I feel very harassed yeah i'm belittled were you ostracized or was there someone um, that you i think on my end it was myself i understand people have different beliefs and i respect that and i think it's good for everyone to share their beliefs uh that's the way we progress but I think when people become ignorant or offensive consistently without any type of evidence or any type of backup behind that, that's the point where I say, you know what, I probably shouldn't be friends with you because you may smile in my face, but uh, behind my back, you, you have a different sentiment. I haven't lost any relationships because me and my friends don't really dive into politics. We kind of just play video games and, and talk, talk about comics together. And you be bisexual and kiss too, am I right? <laughs> I think if you lose a relationship over politics, that's kind of sad. Unfortunately, it's a part of growing up. Yeah, no. <laughs> for sure. So. Hopefully you won't lose any friends, but usually as you get older, you start to see those divides a little clearer. I mean, you guys are older than us. Was it like this going back now 20 years ago? Politics has changed so much, and I think you touched on it, that now it's being associated, policy is being associated with ethics. I haven't lost any friendships or relationships because well, yeah, I mean, media device has gone up like significantly where people can't even have conversations about anything anymore. I won't allow that to happen. I believe that the majority of us, probably about 80 percent, are in the middle with varying degrees. And there are those people who are very, very conservative, very, very ultra liberal, who are the outliers. Well, I think it's subtle where you have somebody that you meet with on a regular basis. You talk with them. You have a good time. If topics get brought up and, and it's a it's a oh okay you're one of those they don't tell you that to your face but it's kind of subtle and also i think with the prevalence of social media people's opinions are a lot more out there i never understood why anyone posted political opinions on social media i think it's just annoying well i have three kids. everybody posts everything on social media it's very annoying in general so kids. they know more about politics than i did I when i was voting age it's annoying yeah um, <laughs> I think it's very encouraging because they're, they're, they're going to be more informed when they are of voting age. I mean, yeah, it just it makes life more divisive. Maybe. I mean, there's more arguments and stuff and more, more relationships ending because politics is such a big part of life. Hi, my name is Scott. I am a huh? uh, liberal parent. I have many children. I have four. My oldest daughter is extremely left wing. My uh, two oh. middle daughters are uh, roughly right in the middle there. And then Chase is conservative. My name is whoa that's his kid is chase wow chase i'm 19 years old and i'm on the conservative teen side you think that chase just wants to be annoying and that's why he's conservative my dad scott we talk about politics mostly uh, gun rights and the government in the economy we disagree but we, we like hearing each other's side the feminist movement is overrated for sure dude i don't know probably nowadays a little bit i don't know that i've seen anything like a value from like the feminist <laughs> no bitches
of or I mean the conversation seems to heavily rely I don't know I just don't know I don't know if I've seen like a feminist give me like a good solid like uh, feminist answer lately you know like like for instance we'll reference the gender pay gap which exists but not it's completely out of context right so they're like oh Women make like 82 cents on the dollar. I think that's what it is now to a man. It's like, okay, but when you factor in things like hours worked and uh, jobs, you know, uh, that you're going for, um, time off, et cetera, that number goes to like 99%. So you're making like 99 cents on the dollar, right? It drastically almost disappears. Now we could have a conversation about that top 1%, which I think tends to be more in like marriage managerial positions where people can advocate for their own wages. Um, and like that gets into a conversation about how women uh, growing up are generally taught to like not be annoying, right? It's like, oh, hey, keep quiet, like don't be annoying, don't be disruptive. And so like part of that is like a lack of advocation uh, for yourself, which stems from being socialized into not being a burden uh, or what people would consider a burden. So there's a conversation definitely to have there from a social perspective for women, hundred um, percent. You know, but I feel like I don't know that maybe. Uh, how much we financially value jobs that women tend to gravitate towards, like social work jobs should probably be paid better, like uh, direct support professionals, people who work with like uh, people with disabilities, uh, like caretaking type jobs that can be very uh, powerful and important for society, and women tend to gravitate towards them, and like we could probably pay them more, right? There's a fundamental lack of like femininity in, uh, or fundamental lack of appreciation for what I would call consider femininity in society aspects where women generally gravitate towards, right? Maybe we could have conversations about that. Um, I think for a lot, like for the most part, everybody has an equal opportunity to do anything, regardless of whether they're a man or a woman. It depends on the individual whether they can actually adhere to that thing. We're probably better off focusing on like economic aspects, um, like trying to provide better education and better wealth redistribution or better wealth distribution for people, right? So yeah, the definition of feminism in other countries is a lot more important. Absolutely, I, I do believe that uh, where there's less freedom. I'm not saying that there's nothing left. I just don't know what else is left because, like, I never really hear a reasonable conversation. I mean, we could have definitely have conversations about sexual assault, um, for sure. That's a big thing. I mean, we talk about that a lot. So maybe there's a, there's a conversation there for like for feminists to talk about, uh, like like rape culture in America, which is obviously not the same as in other countries where it's much worse. But there's different conversations about like you know consent, but. Uh, and like, you know, women being left alone at night because they're afraid or like not being able to be left alone at night because like, you know, there are a lot of shitty men out there who will take advantage of women. So there's definitely, there is, there's is still stuff to have a conversation about from a feminist perspective. So I guess it isn't overrated. Maybe it's overrated, but it's still necessary uh, depending on the, on the, the conversation that's had. <clears throat> what is happening here? Oh, yes. The oh. reason I sat down is because Feminism as we know it in social media and the marches is generally run by white women and yeah. we don't have a lot of intersectionality. Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger. Yeah, yes. and um, Susan, B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony, you know, total racist. The women. You know, what's really interesting about um, what's interesting about the conversation about intersectionality when it comes to feminism. It's a very it's a very. It's a very interesting conversation because they're a hundred percent correct. There is a lack of representation from non-white women in feminism, but when it comes to ideologies, there has to be a certain level of like homogeneity versus like heterogeneity, right? So only so much of the conversation about feminism can can go away from women and towards like black women, for instance, right? Where you have like fifteen percent of the population is black. And then you get into a lot more of an issue is like a lot of the um, sexism that black women are experiencing are from what black men. Um, and so like it gets into this area. It's like, how do you call that out as without being called racist? By like, if it, like we could do it here. I think people who are engaging with this video are, aren't going to be like completely bad faith. But the reality is, is like a lot of like what's going on. It's like, how do you as a like the organization of feminism go like, yeah, black men are the problem with black women. You know, like it comes it comes off as real. I'm not saying black women don't face uh, sexism from white people either. I'm just saying that like a lot of people, uh, black people tend to be more uh, like segregated, and a lot of the issue um, is there's a lot of issues inside of that community, right? So like it's difficult to have that conversation about like particular needs uh, of of black women sometimes because it might you kind of might get lost on the fundamental idea of like feminism if you get too specific right 
And the biggest issue is that like white women are the most, there's mostly white women in America. Like, you know, when it comes to women, there's a disproportionately high amount of white women. Um, so you really just got to fuck white people out of existence. And then eventually things will, of course, correct themselves. <laughs> and boom, there you go. And that headed up the uh, suffragette movement. They were not inclusive. Of course, yes. And they wanted rights for white women. That's true. And that thread has followed us to be very exclusionary to uh, black women, disabled women, women of color, indigenous women. I don't think that feminism in America is based off racism. The reason why there's more white feminists is because there's a higher white population in America. So generally, there's going to be more white feminists because of that. I think it makes a decent point. I mean, it's not necessarily wrong. That definitely in the beginning of feminism, feminists wanted uh, votes for women, that women would be allowed to work, would be allowed to go to universities and such. Yeah, but they wouldn't have to sign up for the draft. Stupid women. What are you doing? You got to sign up for the draft. Crazy. I definitely agree with that, but I think that feminism has gone too far into saying my body, my choice and um, saying that women are agree. not. Yeah, actually, I guess feminism is necessary because they're trying to fucking ban abortion. So shit. All equal, saying that women are being oh suppressed God. by white men and such things. Uh, no, uh, we got a long way to go. There's just not enough done. Thank you, Scott. In America or just in the world in general? Uh, well, America, for sure. The world in general is a heck of a lot worse than America. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I think that... Well, what do, we, what do we need to do? Well, I just want to know what he thinks. I would like him to explain that. We should be able to do everything that men can, but we also have to protect ourselves. So if you want to be a stay-at-home mom and do one of the hardest jobs on the planet, you absolutely should be able to do that. What job is that? Blowjobs? What? Listen, I'm not trying to be a fucking asshole. Listen, I'm really not trying to be mean, but like a stay-at-home parent easier than working a real job i'm just saying i'm not trying to be fucking rude okay unless it's this job this is obviously much easier than a stay-at-home parent okay um but like you know it's a hard job absolutely i'm just saying bro like we, we gotta we gotta keep it in mind depends on the child yeah that's i guess that's true i guess now with more children being born with disabilities then maybe it's a little bit more difficult yeah maybe you're right i don't know Maybe maybe I'm just being ignorant. Maybe I'm just being ignorant. Um, that, but you should also discuss. Definitely easier than being a, a working parent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's for sure. With your partner and putting things into place so that you're protected if you choose to do that. Some women aren't doing that, like life insurance and things like that. I think part of feminism is being able to take care of yourself. Capitalism is failing our society. Yeah, I think so. I think our capitalism is absolutely failing our society 100%. I think for capitalism fundamentally is fine. I just think that we have a horrible we have a horrible distribution of wealth. It's like ruining our society. This uh, system that just values production, consumerism, production, consumerism until you die doesn't work for anybody but a very 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 small percentage of billionaires and it's all it's all baloney that the system is rigged to keep workers working and and the rich just keep getting richer yeah um i think there could be some good in capitalism which is like the innovation part of yeah, it but that. in general capitalism definitely sucks uh, from the poor there's a lot of industries that definitely hey, shouldn't have universal basic come income Boom. I solved capitalism, guys. <laughs> Any capitalism involved at all. The medical field, it's unjust that certain people get better care than other people just because they're more financially well off. Who are they to determine the value of life? The healthcare system. You don't get to clock out. You are a chef, maid, nanny, etc. You're expected to be the only caretaker even after hours because of your job. Yeah, but after hours, like a person who's working normally, it has to take care of that as well, you know? So like that's, that's the thing. Like you still got to take care of it as well. Um, like if you were a working parent, you know what I mean? So, and it's, but that's why I'm saying, like, I'm not saying it's easy to raise a kid. I'm just saying that like a lot of these things, you know, when you put, you send your, you got a lot of working parents tend to do a lot of the same thing as like stay at home parents kind of for the most part. Um, except they'll like, you know, throw their kid into daycare, which is expensive. Uh, or, you know, you put your kid into school, they're there for eight hours. You know, I'm just saying. You know, I imagine if you're uh, with stay at home parent would have to take care of the kid more than the other parent. But even when the other parent gets home, it's now like socially acceptable. If the other parent hangs out with the kid and like helps take care of the kid, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess it depends on the, the marital arrangement. Creates such profit and that profit is created off the misery of others, of the illness of others, uh, including the um, prison system where you have jails that are privately owned. Because at oh, yeah. that point, what no, you have is a no. hotel and you want to fill up the hotel. Why would there be True. a business that profits off of crime? That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. If you put profit ahead of people, people are going to suffer, obviously. You got a good point. So you said um, 
like only the billionaires succeed in capitalism. And I got to disagree no, with that that's, because I, like I'm the CEO of my own company. That's not what he's that's not what she said. She said that they're the only ones that like really benefit. And she's being exaggeratory, but like the fundamental is that the only people who benefit are people who are at the top. They, they benefit more than anybody else. So that's what she's trying to say. Company. A couple months ago, I started a jewelry company, and it's, wow. I'm not a billionaire, but it's been relatively successful enough to. What are you like on fucking Etsy? Okay. Wait, I can like make rent and and go through college a bit. So I think there's people like me who own a small business who capitalism really benefits. Who, what's your business if, called? If capitalism isn't the solution, then what is the solution? Do you want to hear it? <laughs> socialism. Yeah. Socialism. Yeah. So, so, the problem with democratic social. I mean, you talk. I mean, like, I guess it depends on what your what socialism means to you. Which one is it? Chase Chase's thing's not even on here. Chase's jewelry, you know. Because socialism traditionally is like a is a it's a it's a movement towards communism, which I don't agree with. But like, generally speaking, like if you were talking about like, hey, uh, socialized programs like better welfare systems, et cetera, like universal health care in some capacity, like yeah, I'm okay with that. I think that would definitely be a good idea. Um, okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I personally take a more hands off on it. That's why I'm a UBI guy. I think that a UBI would be a better implementation. People getting the money rather than getting the service, so they can choose what they need to do with the money, right? So instead of giving people money for like, oh, here's money for food or healthcare or insurance, and I'm not against healthcare as well, but uh, you you give somebody like a thousand dollars a month for them to choose what they need to do with it, they can operate with their their priorities better than other people, right? Like people tend to, I think, believe uh, understand what they need more than anything else for in the circumstance that they're in. I know it's a hot take but people need money to be able to afford food healthier food than they need it for health care i know that sounds shitty but realistically speaking there's so many people who would benefit a lot more from just having money and i'm not saying that they don't that healthcare wouldn't be profoundly impactful i'm just saying like from a priorities perspective like wealth distribution is probably a number one uh would be much better in my opinion um about how capitalism hurts the middle class, but in reality, if democratic socialism was tried, the middle class are going to be paying way more taxes, not just the rich. You see, the rich. Who cares? Like it's worse. Every other first world country has a better quality of life, so like than America. So like you're you're not even really arguing from a, a factual perspective. They don't pay taxes because they don't work. They make money off assets. The middle class they work, and because they're working, they're going to pay more taxes under a proposal like Bernie Sanders or. I don't know, AOC or Ilhan Omar. I, I personally am okay with paying higher taxes. I would love people who make billions of dollars pay their fair share of taxes. But so, increased yeah. taxes for a better situation for people overall, that is exactly what I stand for. I'm not sure that uh, socialism is the answer. Yugoslavia before World War II did okay, but they didn't do all that great. All right, well, great. And they were taken over quite quickly. So people will generally classify, classify socialism or democratic socialism. Um, as every other first world country that we live in. So like Germany, by American standards, is democratic socialist. So when they're talking about democratic socialism, which they just brought up, like they're not talking about actual like fucking Venezuela. They're talking about like Canada. They're talking about like fucking Germany, right? They're not talking... They're not talking about like some fucking third world country that's trying to go to, co go to communism. What I'm thinking is capitalism, although is not the best solution is one of the best solutions for a democratic society think about socialism you think about wealth distribution and then money yeah. becomes a very big uh, role too because the ones that have less money become envious of those that have more money and then money is like oh my god this is this is fucking sorry yugoslavia is not third world i'm very sorry i didn't mean to be offensive all right non-good countries i'm just kidding uh her her she's been Okay, hold on. Because the ones that have less money become envious of those that have more money. And then money is like, it becomes a god because you don't want anyone else to have that money but yourself. And if you, for example, look at the Scandinavian countries, they have a capitalistic market, but they have a socialist wealth distribution. Yeah. And that's why it works over there. And I... Well, that's what everybody's... That's what people are advocating um, for. I personally come... It's a second world country? Okay, sorry. From Europe, so I have seen that. So you think that works? A I, socialist? I personally don't think that works. I think it takes a lot of money from the rich and from the middle class. My name is Nathan. I'm 18 years old. I would like to ask the other side if they believe America is the greatest country in the world. If they disagree with that, I want to know what country they believe is better than America. Um, I, I do believe it's a blessing. And it's I a mean, it depends on what your perspective is. Um, um, it depends on what your perspective is. Um, A lot of people think America's the best country in the world because you can go there and it is a land of opportunity. It's a lot easier to get in for a lot of people who aren't in and it, it can cause you to have a better life. But like obviously the quality of life in America is fucking not as abysmal compared to a lot of every other first world country, honestly. Privilege to live in a country that gives you the liberty and freedom and to express who you want to be. 
the American dream is dead. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I think the American dream is mostly dead. It still has its existence, but the American dream has shifted from working hard and and working your way up and, and doing well to like this hyper specific, like, oh my God, I might be TikTok famous type of like insanity where you could be like a, a billionaire or a millionaire. That's where it's kind of shifted from. I think it's being taken away from people. Owning houses is so difficult. Uh, there's so many places that will buy up a house. They'll fucking do some really basic improvements to it and then they'll sell it off for more money. And then 10 years later, you're sinking money into a house that's like just hemorrhaging uh, and being destroyed because they had temporary improvements. The American dream is most mostly dead it's not the same as it used to be um it, it's more about like your one in a million chance of becoming rich rather than like everybody having a potential ability to kind of like eat a little bit of the pie america's dying i mean that's the reality of the situation <laughs> I, gotta, uh, I gotta say i disagree with the phrase american dream an american dream uh for for who you know the native americans we slaughtered uh the enslaved people i mean this this romantic who's we all right. The idea that there's this dream is just basically marketing for capitalism. You know, it's very it's very well funded propaganda and and has it inspired good acts and good people to do good. I don't know if it's propaganda. I think it might have used to have been true. Um, but good things of, of course, of course, because ultimately in a large sense humanity is is good. But this idea of the American dream I think is um I think the fantasy of it is being torn apart a little bit. And I think that's actually exciting because it, it, it opens up room for something better, something more inclusive. It's exciting. What the fuck? To grow. Only, only a white woman would think that the downfall of America is exciting, okay? <laughs> I think the phrase is kind of corny, but the idea that someone's like building themselves up in capitalism, I feel like that I kind of have done that a bit with my business. Well, yeah, but you've done that because you had a very positive starting point. I mean, we're just looking at your father. You guys have decent amounts of money. So your dad right here has given you the resources avail like, uh, that he has available to help you start your fucking business. And you have, you're have you able to be like an adult that, that needs to get a job, that's able to go to college and probably don't even have to really pay your rent or anything. But you get to sell your jewelry and make a profit. And you probably get to keep all that money, which is probably not even a lot of money. It's one of those things where it's inherited wealth. And even if it's not inherited wealth, it's the inherited um, circumstance, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, most rich people don't actually inherit their wealth. Yes, I understand that. But when you grow up in a household that's able to put you through a good education and support you while you make decisions that for a lot of other people would be incredibly risky, like, yeah, you have an inherited level of wealth or, or circumstance, right? So like this person, it's, this isn't the guy who like fucking started from the bottom. Okay. It's not uh, Drake, even though Drake started on the grassy, he actually started off fairly rich or fairly well to do. Uh, it's not like he started in like a fucking, in like a really poor area and he worked his way up. He didn't do that. That's a very rare circumstance to happen. That's almost never happens, right? He's a guy who started off in a good spot and he's just, he's, he's just getting, he's, his parents are just helping him, which is a good thing. Your parents should help you. But like, it's not, it's not like this direct thing. Like, of course he's going to benefit from capitalism because he is already uh, doing well. His parents were already doing well in capitalism, right? Um, so I don't think it's dead. I do think the American dream is dying, though. You know, the American dream now is not the same as it was 30 years ago. Have a family, right. buy a home, have a great job. But now it's very difficult to buy a home. Income has not increased compared True. to the price of a house. You know, I do think it's dying, though, but I don't think it's completely dead because there's a lot of immigrants who are still trying to come to America. America does have the highest immigrant population. 14% of our population are immigrants. True. We have a lot of people on our southern border, and I think they all want to come to America. Yeah, I think the American dream still exists, and I can speak firsthand because my family came from a third world country. Um, but so does the American nightmare. The people suffering not just here, but also around the world due to policies, due to exploitation, due to colonization, due to a lot of issues that are directly at hand to America. So there's a lot of blood on the United States hand. And a lot of people don't want to leave their home country, but the situations that have been created there are forcing people to leave. Like my mother would have loved to stay in Mexico, but unfortunately due to poverty, which had a lot to do with NAFTA and what happened in 1994, directly caused by the United States, yeah. issues that created this migration. So is it a better opportunity here? Yes, my people come here and we send our money back to our ancestors. Would we just like to stay where we're from? Yeah, that would be a much better option. As an immigrant mm. myself, I definitely think that the American dream still exists. We long for the opportunities that people have here in America for the job opportunities that people have. Is she an, is she an Im immigrant herself? Would we just like to stay where we're from? From yeah, where? Would be a much better option. As an immigrant myself, I... From wh I mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole. From where? Like... Canada? 
or are are her family immigrants? Because I would imagine she's sixteen. She would have an accent if she was like an immigrant. So like, I mean, like, yeah, you would be an immigrant from Canada, but like generally, when we talk about immigration uh, and like the American dream, it's usually you know. She said she's from Europe. I thought, okay, well, you know, I, okay, all right. It's just one of those things where, like, obviously, there's a difference between like a, a, a an immigrant that comes from like a European country who's probably not struggling versus an immigrant who comes from like you know Mexico or something who's probably struggling more to an extent, right? Um, because, like he said before, there the reason that he moved from Mexico was because of poverty, and part of that poverty had to do with the fact that America had to try. I'm not educated on NAFTA. But from what he said, uh, part of him is that that poverty comes from like a trade agreement with America that had like a negative impact on Mexico. So he had he came there out of necessity to generate wealth. Whereas this person from Europe, I mean, maybe I'm being ignorant to Europe, but European countries are much more they have much more resources than other countries. So like she's not I don't know when we talked about the immigrant part. I guess I just assume, <laughs> it's just obviously she can't identify with the same struggles as the other immigrants that come here, right? I definitely think that the American dream still exists. We long for the opportunities that people have here in America, for the job opportunities that people have, the innovations that are available in this free market economy, this capitalist country. So, so the American dream is in the eye of the beholder. If you're an immigrant, it's a really good ice cream flavor. Or if you live here, it's different. It's going to be different. I don't like the idea of the American dream, but I am a person who's still going to always believe in hope. If you work hard and you take advantage of opportunities, you can make a difference in your life. I mean, you're an example of it. I'm so amazed by you. I think it's awesome what you're doing um, at such a young age. I am very, very impressed with you three. My hope for it's you. It's got the waffle cone, I think, in it. It's not too bad. It's pretty decent. Very cal very a lot, a lot of calories though. A lot of calories. You is that you stay open minded and that you're always willing to be learners and not just listeners. Yeah. So. Very nice. All right. Great. Hey. All right, what a fun video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.